Habakkuk, mm-hmm. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses uh, 17 and 18, probably 17, 18, and 19. Right? Habakkuk chapter 3. Um, just one second, let me just close a few things here. Um, Yeah, so let me read from Habakkuk 3.17. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, um, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the eel and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fo- fold, and uh, there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. High hills, not high heels. <laughs> anyway, uh, so when we look at verse 17, right? Um, verse 17 uh, paints a very, very bleak picture, right? It says, though the fig tree may not blossom, um, nor fruit be on the vine. So it's talking about different kinds of fruit, figs, grapes, uh, olive, and then also about the harvest that of the field, you know, there's nothing, and the fl- flock also that uh, there's nothing that um, livestock uh, are yielding. There be the f- flocks cut off from the fold, and there's no herd, you know, talking about the cattle. There's no herd in the stall, so it's talking about you know, there's nothing. There's nothing uh, economically. The situation is very, very, very tough, very difficult. And verse 17 is a, it's quite a challenge because he says, yet I will. Okay, So just like you know, uh, the psalmist says, um, I will bless the Lord at all times. You know, a similar thing here where he says, yet I will uh, rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And that word, yet I will rejoice, uh, yes, it, it is about um, uh, exulting. It's about uh, being joyful, being happy. But that word has, uh, that Hebrew word means that you jump up and down. Right? Yet I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Uh, so, full, so full of happiness and joy that uh, jump up and down. And that other, uh, the second part of the verse, you know, uh, I will joy in the God of my salvation. And that, uh, that also has a physical action attached to that. I will joy meaning I will spin around like, you know, spin around foolishly, spin around uh, because of joy. So he's saying, you know, I will rejoice. I will jump up and down in joy. Um, I will spin around, uh, and I'm doing this in the Lord. I uh, rejoice in the Lord, in the God of my salvation. And then in ni- verse 19, the Lord God is my strength. My present tense, he is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high hills. Right. So he's, there's a I will because of the fact that he will. Right. And um, this reality, uh, this truth that he will do that was so strong in Habakkuk that he says, he will do this. He will um, make my feet. He will make me walk. And the Lord God is my strength. And because of which he says, you know, I will rejoice. I will joy. And uh, and, and it's, it's a very, um, uh, I mean, it's a very extroverted and uh, the expressive kind of emotion. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will jump up and down and joy. And I will joy. I, mean, I will spin around like a child. I will spin around because of this joy uh, in in the Lord. God of my salvation. So, uh, though the situation is like this, He is the God of my salvation. He will take me through, right? And He will strengthen. So, uh, may that be our prayer as well, and may that be our our decision, right? When things go wrong, when things go bad, uh, when when you are in a season where there is economically, you know, there, there's no productivity, and we see that things are not going fine that we can say I will because he will right let's pray father we we thank you Lord thank you for 
this testimony of how the Prophet Habakkuk and, and the truth that, that we can also agree and say, yes, I will, I will rejoice, I will joy, I will, I will rejoice, I will jump up and down and in praise and thanksgiving, I will jump up and down, I will spin around in joy because of my God, because of who you are, Lord. You are our strength. Yes, yes Lord, you will make us that strong, O oh Father God, and you will make our feet like theirs feet to walk, to be sure-footed and to walk on the high hills, O oh Father God. Yes, Master, we thank you for doing this for your name's sake in each one of us. And I just pray that, I pray a release of that, Father God, that truth, let it be our experience, Father God. If any of us are going through uh, a similar situation, Father God, and maybe emotionally, uh, Lord, we are going through something uh, of this sort. And Lord, I pray that you will strengthen our wills to say, I will, and because you are the God who will, Lord, uh, do this for us and take us through that. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' matchless name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey we've always uh, we've already come to the I think the the end, the very end of uh, uh, our course. So um, today we are going to look at uh, chapter eleven, which is which is more like miscellaneous things that we are talking about. You know, the main um, main topic we've already handled, we've already covered. So we're just coming to some miscellaneous things like questions and uh, and so on. So so let's look at that, right? And even before we uh, look at that, let's look at some of the some of the things that we've already seen, right? Psalm 23 verse 3 saw that uh, God is the restorer of our soul. And uh, we saw that uh, wholeness emotionally uh, has been provided for us uh, through the cross. I, uh, it has already been given for us. The Lord Jesus has uh, bought it for us on the cross. So emotional wholeness is also covered by what he did for us and what he's uh, extending to us. Right? And uh, this has been provided for on the cross. And um, uh, our responsibility is to receive and to walk in it. Our responsibility involves our will, our choice, right? to receive by faith. And uh, yes, we looked at certain things that we need to do in order to, uh, in order to enter into emotional uh, wholeness, and also to sustain and walk in emotional health. Right? It it uh, it requires some things that we need to do, and uh, we can start from a place of where we are, maybe emotionally battered, maybe emotionally weak, but we can progress and we can go. Uh, uh, down that path of restoration, right? And uh, when uh, we saw that emotional wholeness and healing, yes, it can happen in a moment. It can also be a series of steps, a path to emotional wholeness and to sustain, to continue to walk in emotional wholeness. Uh, we we need to, you know, uh, walk in certain things, right? We need to um, uh, make sure that certain things are consistent in our lives. Right. Uh, we need to guard against certain things. We looked at that also. Right. So uh, let's look at some of these uh, some questions. Uh, let me just share the notes. Okay. So um, some questions here. Right. Uh, just coming up on the screen. Okay. okay so the first question is, uh, you know. Are, are all the emotional problems uh, caused, does it have a spiritual cause in the sense, is it because of demons, right? Is it because of demons? So when we look at the different sources or the different causes for which one might have emotional challenges and issues right, or problems, uh, we see different Know, different sources, different causes. It could be, uh, it could be our circumstance. It could be our challenge and our response to it. Right? What is happening in our circumstance? What has happened? Like maybe some stressful things. Maybe we are going through a season of, you know, professionally. We are going through a lot of, um, uh, maybe late nights and early mornings. And there's a physical stress. There's an emotional stress of, um, of, uh, you know, high expectations and meeting those high expectations professionally. Or it could be, you know, some some loss that we are going through. It could be uh, maybe. Uh, you know, some bereavement that we are going through, some sorrow that we are going through because of a loss of a loved one or some relative and somebody in the family. Um, it could even be uh, the marriage 
relationship that is uh, that is you know there are challenges to it right there's just this unraveling maybe there could be some parenting um, you know challenges because of that you know the children uh, behaving in a certain way and the wayward behavior and lifestyle of children and that's causing stre stress and so on so uh, so stress and emo uh, emotional challenges that arise out of it could be because of that it could be physical as well physical conditions you know like uh, there could be some illnesses there could be some you know we, we looked at how certain levels of chemicals in our brain physical brain also affect our moods and uh, our um, uh, you know uh, uh, can can also cause certain uh, illnesses and it could be it could be a physical thing purely right uh, maybe serotonin levels and, and there are other hormones uh, the, uh, the imbalance of which causes uh, some conditions um, it could be because of depression fear anxiety uh, rising because of physical conditions, because of uh, certain things and the physical, um, uh, because of the brain, and then these things persist because we are not addressing them in the, in the proper way, and it could be because of that, right? It could be even because of unhealthy habits, right? They could be an abuse of substance like alcohol or drugs, or, or even prescription medicines. Right, like cough syrups and uh, and something something like anti-allergic things and uh, and which which maybe sleep-inducing and uh, um, so some of these things, right? Um, antidepressants and so on. So we, we we take those things and become addict addicted to it. So there's an ab abuse of these uh, of these medicines and because of which you know there could be. Uh, problems right or, or there could be other uh, other things like pornography and uh, and even exercise lack of exercise right lack of exercise uh, which affect our body um, well gluttony is uh, listed as something that is uh, that is of the flesh and uh, you know a work of the flesh or a you know uh, that in that list and um, we see that that causes things as well you know you just keep overeating and that overeating also has a source in uh, as a root in emotional uh, uh, maybe because of stress maybe because we want to feel good right because the whole act of eating and and food um, releases certain pleasure Right, pleasure center. So we feel a certain pleasure. We feel good. The body feels good, uh, and so you know, eating, uh, also overeating and overindulgence. Every time someone feels stressed out, reaches, you know, you just order something or reach out, look in the refrigerator, look for that snack box, and you know, eat something. And so that also causes uh, emotional uh, challenges. Then definitely there are spiritual sources. It could be because of demonic spirits. It could be because of uh, you know uh, spirits of uh, you know various spirits that we see listed: spirit of heaviness, spirit of fear, and uh, and you know spirit that causes. We we see in in, in, the, in the word of God in in Mark chapter nine. Uh, you know this this spirit uh, forcing or causing this boy to fall into water, into fire, and so on. And the father comes and he's helpless and he's saying, Lord, please pray. I mean, please cast, I need help, cast out that demon. It's causing him to do all this and um, you know, suicidal actions, basically, you know, causing harm to oneself uh, and so on. So definitely there is the spiritual uh, source of powers of darkness and so on. But to say that everything uh, is caused by demons is wrong. Right, so emotional challenges or problems, uh, not everything is caused by demons. Um, well, having said that, when you look at you know, the fall of man and was what caused the fall of man, yes, the original sin or the fall of man that's the that's a cause of everything, the breakdown of everything. We know that, we understand that, um, but um, when we look at 
you know each of these causes we see that yes it's uh, some things are physical some things are you know purely emotional um, uh, in the psychological realm some things are uh, abuse of uh, things that are things that are good things that are meant to be uh, helpful and uh, you know nutritious but the abuse of that also leads to you know these kind of challenges okay so another question you know, is it okay for a believer? You know, okay, somebody is going through these challenges. Is it okay for someone to consult a psychologist or a psychiatrist for maybe counseling or maybe sessions which uh, which are therapeutic? You know, uh, for therapy. Well, the answer is this: that well, God, you know, from uh, He has given us the knowledge, He has given us the understanding, and the capacity to understand these natural processes, right? to understand what is causing this. And also the know-how or the knowledge to, to change that. Right? So when we, when we read through scripture, we see that, well, God's knowledge and understanding that he imparts to uh, human beings is, is more than just, uh, just the revelation of the word of God or revelation or understanding of himself. It is also understanding of the natural processes, right? We, uh, I think we read in uh, Exodus and we, um, um, or is it, uh, so when we, when we uh, in fact, when we studied about the Holy Spirit, we, we see that, uh, well, he's the one who actually gives the ability and the knowledge, um, you know, for, for Bezalel and uh, others like him to uh, the skill and the ability to, uh, uh, to, to do these creative things, to come up with these creative things. He's the one who gives the skill and ability. And uh, we also see that um, the knowledge of the whole, uh, the whole aspect of growing things and uh, how the different things need to, different crops uh, uh, need to be harvested and so on. It comes from him, right? So also about the human brain, the mind, and the functioning, well, he's the one who created it. So he's well able to give us the know-how about the body, you know, two doctors, psychologists, and psychiatrists, to, uh, to give an understanding of what, what it does and how it can be treated, right? So, so there's no harm. In going for um, for counseling or um, or you know uh, or, or therap uh, therapeutic sessions, as long as the one who is counseling. Now we know, right? Not all ha are believers. Not all have the knowledge of God. Not all follow Jesus, right? So as long as the methods do not contradict or violate God's word and God's instructions. It's fine. I remember, you know, when uh, I was, um, this, I used to interact with some university students. Now, I was a, I was a postgraduate student, and there were some who were actually uh, doing some doctorate studies uh, in, uh, I, I forget if it was psychiatry, or I think it was psychiatric. So now, they were indulging in some methods which were clearly you know, contradicting God's word. Right? So uh, they, for example, uh, uh, this was something to do with the person's. Uh, I think it was a, it was addressing a person's lust or something of that sort, and they were uh, they were clearly you know doing something because they were actually uh, engaging. Uh, you know, a, a someone, a prostitute, and uh, engaging her to meet with this person, and to uh, you know, they were doing something, and, and, and it was completely off, right? Um, so I was just talking to them, and they said, "Yeah, sometimes we, these methods, uh, you know, we, we we employ, you know, it was a clearly a red flag." So if the psych psychiatrist or a psychologist is is going to employ some method or means that uh, that are in the name of you know providing treatment or therapy if it's going to contradict violate god's word then clearly uh, we should stay away or not recommend you know such kind of methods for people
right? But if people were to ask us, you know, is it okay for counseling? Uh, the answer is yes. Answer is yes, but with this disclaimer, right? With this clause. Um, and so also, you know, for medicines and so on, uh, the same thing. Right. If if uh, they prescribe certain medicines, if they prescribe certain medications, uh, well, that's that's absolutely fine. Um, and um, well, sometimes this is this is what happens uh, when people get uh, prayed for, or they they want to take a stand um, based on faith in God's word. Um, or maybe they've been coming to church and you've been ministering to them and then they say, you know, I, I think I want to stop. And that happens so many times. Right? I think I want to stop this medication because I have faith that uh, God will heal me or God has healed me. So I'm stopping it. Right? It could be a physical condition. It could be for a, you know, a, a critical you know, functioning for them to function normally. You know, they, they need to take that medication, but then uh, they say, I think I, I've had enough. I don't want to take it anymore. Right? So what do we do in such cases? Right? Do we, um, uh, what do we recommend? Right? Do we affirm their decision to say, okay, um, yeah, by all means, stop the medication. Right? Uh, we need to be careful, right? We need to be careful because simply because as believers we are in different levels of faith in the previous uh, the chapter before the you know, one uh, before mental health we looked at how uh, in, uh, in in the process of renewing of the mind it is possible for us to step into presumption right so presumption is not faith to presume something to be true to assume that yes um, this is true when clearly it is not is is not faith. So as believers, we have people or we are different stages of growth in maturity and also different levels of faith. okay So well, people can uh, some may just say, Right, some some might be at a level of faith where they know that they know that they know that God has healed them, and uh, and they they don't need anything. They're just standing on faith. Okay, they're saying, okay, I know God has healed them, and it is faith. It is genuine faith. Right? We can't doubt it. It is faith. There could be some who could be just presume it's faith. That's the other end, and where it's not faith at all. Like it's not. It's just based on that emotion or. Uh, based on you know their frustration of having to take medication and uh, coming to that place right? or it could be that some people have been you know using medication for some time and then they they are um, you know and then they they just want to, to taper down and, and stop and but it's on their own right you know all these things you know as ministers of god as people maybe who are counseling or uh, interacting with uh, such people. The recommendation is that you don't recommend. If you are a medical person, if you are a trained psychologist or psychiatrist, and you are sure that this person uh, to whom you are counseling, to whom you are in touch with, you know, if you recommend that they're not going to harm themselves, that they will be able to, if you recommend not taking the medication, Right. Um, if you tell them yes, we have prayed, we believe, and 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 also you know you you have the knowledge that taking that or not taking that medication is going to enable them to function normally, and uh, you know then probably you could take a call. But if you are not a trained technical a medical person, do not advise. Right. So the advice we can give is you get checked. You check with your whoever's prescribing, the medical person, the psychiatrist or the doctor, whoever's prescribing. It. You check. Let them come to the conclusion that yes, you are indeed healed. That you do not need these medications further for your normal functioning. Uh, let them let them be satisfied, and and even if. You know, you you go and tell them with confidence that yes, uh, I'm uh, I'm fine. No, let them be satisfied. 
and let them make that decision right so it's always to and, and sometimes when we are ministering when we are praying we know you know we, we know for sure that god has touched them god has healed them and in such cases as well and in even in such cases um it is recommended that they check and then stop just check and stop. I remember once, you know, just uh, going to uh, a, a place, going to uh, traveling to, and then I just receive a call. I've been meeting with this with this boy for some time, and um, he was heavily, you know, like uh, having a problem for a long time, and uh, it was unaddressed, and it just compounded, and uh, heavily, heavily depressed in the sense he would sleep during the day. You know, he would like. And keep awake at night. He was unable. He was, this whole thing was completely switched, and and uh, and very sad, right? So he suddenly, you know, I just received a call and saying, "I, first, I've decided to stop all medication. I've decided to stop." And um, and he was so uh, so set on it. But I knew that, you know, he he was it things would spiral down, even if he missed it for a day. Like he was not in that place at all. Right? So then I tried helping him. I mean, I tried telling him that you know you need to, uh, you know, you know why, 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 why did you come to the decision? He said, no, I was just, uh, I just felt that uh, that I, I should just stop. I just felt I should stop. You know, I've been reading the Bible and I, you know, you've been praying and I just felt. Okay, so then I just said, you know, you, yeah, that's fine, absolutely fine. That's great. That you're feeling this way, and uh, that you know. You're building your, yourself in your faith, but just one best, you know. When is your, when is your next checkup with the doctor? He said, "Okay, just next week, fine. Just continue with the medication till next week. You know, you you stand on the word, you build yourself in your faith. You continue on the medication. It's just taking that is not a sign of lack of faith in God, right? You continue with it, and then you get checked by the doctor. And if he says that you need to let go, you can stop or you can taper. If he reduces the dosage, just go with it. But till such time, I just this is my my request is that you continue with it. Okay. Thankfully, he he said okay, yeah. and then you know he got checked, and then I think the doctor recommended a reduced dosage and and so on. So so the thing is this, you know, in our zeal or maybe even in our presumption, let not let's not do that to others. And even if it's for our own selves, right, let's uh, let the medical person check, okay, uh, and then give a clean uh, uh, diagnosis. Okay, so what about uh, you know hypnosis or you know, uh, other things which involve hypnosis, where um, where there's a, a, a release of control of our minds. Right? We are just completely giving up the control of our minds to some another human being, and opening up. Um, and that, uh, you know, as we see that that opens up. That's an open door for uh, so many things, manipulation. That's an open door for uh, for you know spirits to come and uh, inhabit and and influence and so on. So um, hypnosis and anything else. Where uh, we are permitting others to control our mind and will, and uh, you know, there's a, so much of uh, 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 there's so much of uh, a chance of abuse and manipulation as well. Um, so it is recommended that we, as believers, uh, we don't recommend this hypnosis or other other therapy or that we don't enter into it ourselves. So this would come as one of those things that, uh, you know, if, even if uh, methods, uh, maybe a psychiatrist, or uh, I don't know if they actively, you know, recommend this, but even if they do, that we don't, um, you know, we don't step into that, right? So it is, uh, because this kind of manipulation is, uh, all forms of manipulation we see is, is actually, has its roots in witchcraft, right? Uh, and rebellion as well. Okay. So, any questions? Anything? Any questions that uh, you might have? You know, we looked at about three questions. Any questions that um, is on your mind uh, when it comes to, you know, emotional health 
or particularly of this nature you know you could we can we can ask now or maybe any questions that people have asked asked you and uh, regarding mental health or something that you've always had uh, questions okay fine okay let's look at um, you know um, some of these um, look at the spiritual or some of these spirits which cause uh, different things uh, different um, um, the, the influence and oppress uh, you know we see uh, and and you, you you have learned in healing and deliverance as well uh, that um, we have different spirits that are listed in scripture and they're given different names uh, because of what they actually carry out or the assignment that is on them right? um, so uh, a lying spirit or a foul spirit or an unclean spirit it does exactly that right a spirit of heaviness spirit of harlotry uh, spirit of lust it does that it promotes that or uh, or goes about suggesting that the person you know do, does that or gets into uh, that area right so so these are the the when the spirits manifest themselves and they cause these things they cause these problems or uh, bring about these problems in an individual right uh, and uh, so we we see this right so um so as a person who's a minister of God, as uh, God uses to minister he healing and wholeness to others. Uh, one thing is to be aware okay, this of the fact that, OK, there are these spirits, and they have these assignments. And uh, well, they, they bring these conditions. You know, they uh, cause these conditions uh, in, in people. Right? So to be for us to be aware of that. Okay. So, uh, when God, when we encounter people, maybe being influenced by, maybe being oppressed by uh, these kind of things, then, um, then what what are we to do? Right? We God, in fact, is looking at us. He's commissioned us to go ahead and minister freedom, right? Minister wholeness to others. So, uh, first and foremost, you know, as believers, we need to be ready in season and and in, in out of season being ready which means being ready in all seasons right um, to be in a state of readiness um, to so for that that we keep ourselves healthy right? so we keep ourselves emotionally physically spiritually healthy right so we get into um, a, a good rhythm right, of um, of ministering, of working, ministering, maybe if it's in a, in a season that we are studying, and you know, a good rhythm of carrying out our responsibilities and uh, spending time uh, refreshing or renewing ourselves in the inner man. Right? And some of these rhythms are like continuous, right? We're praying in the spirit throughout, we are you know, talking to God throughout, uh, we are ensuring that uh, guarding ourselves from all kinds of uh, things that might drain us of uh, of our emotions or uh, you know we we're guarding ourselves right and guarding our heart from from all kinds of things from the things of the flesh from from bitterness and and rage and all that we're just guarding our hearts because out of our heart flows the issues of life so we are guarding ourselves right? so we need to keep ourselves and this is a continuous thing just like how we cannot uh, just you know expect to eat a bad meal you know that it's rotten and uh, and uh, and not expect to have consequences we can't just eat something and then you know not expect to have consequences on our bodies right when you know that it's not good uh, why why indulge in it right so also keep ourselves spiritually to keep ourselves physically emotionally healthy right 
So when it comes to ministering healing, we need to understand that um, um, certain things that, um, well, it need not, this encounter, it need not always be a power encounter, right? Where there's a manifestation of, of, the, uh, of the spirit and it tries to intimidate and uh, and do all sorts of things to you know uh, to manifest itself and, and to put it put everything that it can do on display um, and then you know as a minister of god we are doing certain things but we are you know we we, we don't need to shout or uh, scream and you know we don't need to do that right so it can be a truth encounter an encounter of truth an encounter of truth is is a power encounter so if there's an encounter of truth then which means there's uh, we are presenting truth and authority we are standing on the authority of god's word right? we are reassured we are confident we are calm we are um, in christ right so we are based on that authority we are reassured of the authority that that God has given us, that Christ has given us, that Jesus has extended to us. And Luke 10 verse 19 talks about the authority that he gave his uh, disciples. The Lord says, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents, scorpions, and all the power of the enemy. So which means he's, he's vested that authority upon us. And as the church, all authority has been given to him, and he has given us the authority as the church, as the people of God. So we walk in, we don't have to, you know, just go around and flaunt that authority by shouting, screaming, uh, etc. So we can be quiet, we can be authoritative, uh, and authority flows from that revelation in our hearts. We being fully convinced fully convinced right and uh, not having a shred of doubt fully convinced that well he has given us the authority and when we issue that command that thing has to go that thing has to leave right the demons have to leave so we we speak uh, and we evict the, the the demons that are taking residence or troubling someone uh, with the authority that god has given us the authority that he's given us and by using the word of god right? by using the word of god by declaring what he has already finished on the cross right? by declaring what he has done because of the shed blood right? so we declare that and we uh, command the spirits to come out in the mighty name of jesus right? so we do that um well, do we engage in a conversation with the demons? Right. Um, some people, you know, we've seen, you know, some people do that. Have a conversation. Where do you come from? How long have you been there? Etc. Uh, Etc. Et well, it, it helps to uh, it helps to know what kind of a demon it is. It helps to know uh, so that we can be specific and we can address that area, and we can counsel that person. You know, after the whole deliverance, you can counsel the person to shut the door, to not indulge in those areas. You know, it helps. Um, in that sense, it helps right, to know that okay, this kind of a demon, uh, it came in. The, the, maybe it's a, it was a demon of um, a lust, which right, which tried to came in. Which, which I mean, which came in through the open door of maybe that person was in pornography or something, and then continue to you know continue to walk in it, and and the demon. Uh, energize that area and uh, you know, causing the person to go and go further into into that and entangled in that and so on so it helps to uh, address that area and say okay you need to be careful you, you need to uh, be watchful in this you know, don't don't relax don't let down your guard when it comes to these kind of things right so, because that's the open door that caused the problem that caused the enemy to come in so we be careful now right um, and so in that area in, in that sense, it helps, right? So it helps to know, right? But not, but it's we don't need to, you know, have or 
have a chat with the, with the father of darkness, engage in conversations, and you know, and so on. All we need to do, like the Lord Jesus did, is to cast out to the authority. Okay, okay. so um, so we keep in mind that um, the the enemy is not something that we're going to negotiate with, right? You're not going to negotiate with the enemy. Uh, these uh, spirits are vicious. Spirits are, uh, they come with one agenda, that to steal, kill, and destroy. And steal and kill and destroy. And there's a hierarchy, and and uh, they they want to create problems and and want to keep a person in bondage and so on. So so nothing good comes out of these spirits, right? It's just bondage and uh, entanglement in sin. And uh, for some time, it could be uh, extremes like this is less, you know, uh, I'm doing this for the sake of good health and, you know, some practices, you know, new age thing like meditation and yoga and all those things. Uh, but it's a path for the, which the enemy takes further and further away from Jesus, away from life itself. Right. Uh, so nothing good comes out of it. They are the author of the source of lies and deception. Okay. So, uh, so for us to understand that, and also that the you know to be to be aggressive, like to be assertive. Maybe aggressive is not the word. Assertive, right? Um, and so on. So um, the Lord Jesus very clearly. Mark 16, it says, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out. In my name, they will cast out. You know. So in the Lord's mind, in his heart, this is what the believers will do. They will cast out. They're not going to compromise. They're not going to entertain. Uh, they will cast out the demons, which are causing these problems, right? which have infiltrated um, and taken a wrong place uh, maybe residence or maybe a place of influence and maybe a foothold right my believers in the lord's heart it's this they will ask them in my name which means the authority and uh, they are doing this in my place uh, and with the delegated authority they will cast out okay so also uh, you know we do the same thing so uh, when it comes to whether adults or children or anything, uh, we we do it. Right? Okay, so with that we come to the end of uh, you know of the notes uh, and also of this uh, of the subject of uh, emotional health. And um, so if there are any uh, any doubts, any questions, uh, you could ask. And. Uh, and this we will see if we have some additional thoughts at, uh, in our next session. Right, we'll we'll have one more session uh, next week, and uh, if, uh, you know may, maybe we could questions. Maybe we could have something to be reiterated in whatever we have learned so far. Um, but with that, we could uh, bring things to a close. So, um, if there are any questions, if there are anything that you would want to share, we could take some time to do that. Uh, otherwise, we can close. Okay. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll close this uh, session, and we'll have one more next week, and we can talk about some additional things. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, we'll meet up again. Have a great weekend. We'll catch up next week. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. 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 Bye.